So um, allow me to introduce myself. I'm Guy Martin. I come from Belgium, so sorry about the accent sometimes. It's going to be a bit lousy. <laughs> All right, so today I'm going to speak about sniffing cable modems. Uh, you'll see it's actually a very, very easy thing. Um, it took me about just one day when I had the idea about, oh, let's do that this way. And oh, I got packets now. I can sniff everybody. Cool. So sure, sorry. So as I said, it, it took me just one day to find out how to sniff the, the, the packets out of a, a simple TV card. You'll see it's very easy and uh, really freaky, actually. Let's see. Um, so I will speak about uh, DOCSIS, of course. Uh, this is the agenda for today. Uh, what is DOCSIS? First explain what is this protocol, which is the one used by the cable modems. Um, detail a bit the general architecture, so this way you find out, uh, you will understand uh, how a DOCSIS network is implemented around across the city and why you can sniff this or this part of the network. Uh, I'll talk about the registration process. It's an interesting part sorry, of, um, of this um, world sniffing stuff because it gives a lot of information about the modem, its configuration. Um, you'll see it's really interesting. Uh, about encryption on the link, there is encryption. Sometimes it's not mandatory. I'll talk about this later. Um, then how to sniff it, of course, what you came for, the crunchy part. Uh, DVB-C and ATC card, that'll be uh, the hardware that I use. So there are two parts there, the hardware, the software. Software, I'll talk about Packetomatic, which is uh, the software I developed to, to do the sniffing. And eventually, talk about what you can do once you sniff this. There are things related to privacy. There are, you can uh, do a lot of SNMP acts on the modems as well um, that allow you to, give, to have, uh, like, well, you'll see. <laughs> um, and miscellaneous stuff, and eventually the references. After I'll, uh, when I'm now I'll be done with the talk, I'll do um, a demo so you can actually see this uh, going on. All right, so let's see. What is DOCSIS? DOCSIS stands for Data, Data Over Cable Service Interface Specification. There are actually um, right now three versions of the DOCSIS protocol. DOCSIS 1, which is the very first one, uh, doesn't have a lot of uh, stuff. It basically allows you to transfer packets and that's it. Basic, what, um, sorry, DOCSIS 1.1, that was the newest version because they've seen, oh, hmm, we can actually clone the max of the modem and there is no authentication. All right, let's fix that. So that was fixed in DOCSIS 1.1. And then um, DOCSIS 2.0, that has implemented some more stuff, um, not much more. And eventually DOCSIS 3, which is uh, not out yet, I mean, it, it's still in development because uh, um, the hardware required to support that new version, which has um, higher encryption and higher bandwidth, is really expensive. That means that if you want to upgrade to this newer version, you have to change the whole infrastructure, meaning all the modems of everybody, uh, of all your customers, and also uh, the CMTS. So the CMTS part is not that big, but changing all the modems is, is not easy. Um, the use of DOCSIS, well, you most commonly know that uh, DOCSIS is used to, uh, to provide internet, that's one thing. Second thing, uh, it's used as well for telephony. Most of the modems right now, um, they have got an ATA, um, so it's phone plugs. You just plug your phone, your normal uh, analogic phone, and you get uh, voice or IP via the modem. Um, it's really important, this part, because uh, no, the, the ISPs provide triple play uh, subscription. So you get internet, you get phone, and you get as well television since in the say it's the same media. Um, also, right now, I've seen some set-top box with uh, so TV decoders and they build in cable modem inside it. This way the ISP can uh, provide on-demand TV and also um, find out what you're looking at, which is, again, really nice. Um, Okay, the general architecture now. This is how it works. So on the ISP side, you have a big box, which is called a CMTS. And this CMTS will send all the packets on a single frequency. So 
it's, it's shared media, as in the old days with the 10 megs Ethernet. It sends everything on the same frequency, so every modem is listening on that frequency and filters out what it needs, what it doesn't need. Um, compared to Ethernet, uh, the old 10 megs uh, coax cable, the return path is different, meaning it's running on different frequencies. Um, and the modems have time slots allocated for each other, so they know when they have to send packets. And because of this, we can actually only sniff the, um, the downstream of it, because the cards that I use, they don't, they're not able to, to get that lower frequency that the upstream use. I'll detail that later. Um, a CMTS, that's used for either a full city. So um, where I come from, there is one city which has just one single CMTS. You plug your TV cable there on, on your back of your PC and you got everybody's traffic. The wall city, it's huge. Also in Bayer City, of course, it's just a, uh, a small neighborhood, but it's still a lot of people when you count all the big buildings and stuff. Uh, also, really important, the DOCSIS protocol has been um, engineered in a way that it could be compatible with all the existing equipments. For example, uh, the frequency range is the very same as in the, the TV uh, frequency range. I mean, talking about the downstream, of course. This means that um, if you have a TV card, well, you can tune to either DOCSIS, either the DV, whatever. It's the very same one. Also, it uses MPEG packets for encapsulation. Uh, this is, again, on purpose that has been done this way um, because digital process, um, so digital um, forwarders can just read the MPEG packets and forward it as if it was TV or, uh, so it does not really matter. Okay. Um, registration process. The very first thing that modem has to do is acquire the downstream frequency. Um, so all it does that, it simply scans the whole range, the whole frequency range. So it starts from bottom, goes to top. Once it goes, once it get, um, what, a get a lock on a certain frequencies, it look if there are the packets that it's supposed to have, aka the sync messages. So there are specific DOCSIS message, sync messages there are sent every now and then, but you're supposed to receive something like 10 in a second. Uh, so it's very easy for a modem to find out in a timely fashion if this is DOCSIS frequency or, or not. Once it got the, um, the, downs, the downstream frequency, it tunes on it, read the packets from it, and then the upstream parameters are sent to the modem this way. Then it configures itself and is able to, at this point, have a link, a, a bi bi-directional link. So this way it can get an IP address. This is done via simply DHCP, as in every uh, network. And then once it's got its IP address, it downloads the configuration file via TFTP. This configuration file is very interesting because it contains a lot of information. For example, you'll find in there um, what is your, down, uh, your downstream speed, so your download speed, your upload speed, also uh, all the ACLs, for example, if uh, what device can actually manage the IP address, uh, sorry, the, the modem via SNMP, so it will tell you, okay, now you get um, this IP address, this source IP address is allowed with that SNMP community, and it will be able to do all sorts of stuff to the modem. Um, there's also ACLs for IP filters. For example, the the common way to disable the port 25 for uh, SMTP connections, that's done via this TFTP configuration. They simply block port 25 on the modem. This way you cannot send or receive emails. Uh, and then, of course, if you can hack around it, you can get rid of it. Uh, so once it's got the TFTP uh, configuration, it supply, simply applies all the, the configuration in the memory and that's it, the modem is fully up and running. Uh, one thing I forgot about that configuration is that um, all the, the the configuration entries, besides the upstream, uh, the uh, speed, 
is done using OIDs like in SNMP. So you, it says uh, dot one and et cetera equals this value. So you can layer on change those value via SNMP as well. Oops, that's not the one. Uh, let's talk about the encryption. That's the interesting part. So the very first, the, the, the important thing to know is that encryption is not mandatory, meaning that you may run on, but at your place, you may have a connection which is not encrypted at all, meaning everybody can just plug, sniff, and that's it. He sees everything you do. That's really, really scary to me. Uh, <laughs> um, there is also, of course, encryption mechanisms, so BPI. BPI uh, stands for Baseline Privacy Interface. There are two versions of BPI. BPI, uh, the normal one, and BPI Plus, and this one provides authentications. So as I said, DOCSIS 1.0 didn't provide any means of authentication. You could just change your modem, take another one that you hacked, and uh, clone the Mac, change the Mac, and that's it, you were on the network. You could do whatever you like. But now with BPI Plus, it uses certificates, so each device has a certificate. Uh, the CNTS as well, and that's the way they authenticate each other, and then eventually they, um, they, they, they negotiate the key this way as well. Another interesting stuff is that currently the, the encryption algorithm, it's DES, and it's only 56-bit key. That is too scary. So, uh, well, right now I'm not cracking it because my cryptanalysis kill are pretty, uh, well, there are no. <laughs> so uh, I like to uh, use this opportunity to ask here if anybody has crypto skills, I'm sure there is, if you could help me on that, find a way to craft this DES key, um, that would be amazing, meaning we could sniff the whole word. Um, so that DES key, for example, it's, it's just a shared key between the ISP and the modem, and the key lasts for 12 hours. So there's plenty of time to crack it. Uh, you can even dump it and then eventually um, recover the data. Um, talking about AES, AES, that's gonna come later on in DOCSIS 3.0. But as I said, this, um, this AES encryption is really expensive, so you need a special chip in the modem, and that raised the price really high. That's why all the, um, the ISPs are not gonna go to DOCSIS 3.0 right now. Um, you may see that some ISP do, but it's not really the real DOCSIS 3.0. It's just for the um, uh, larger bandwidth that DOCSIS 3.0 provides. It provides a larger bandwidth in the fact that it bounds multiple ups, um, downstream uh, in a single channel. So you can um, go to speeds like 100 megs. So AES is not gonna come until one or two years, the thing. Well, depends your ISP. Probably some ISP are, will stick to DOCSIS 1 or DOCSIS 2 even. Okay, so how to sniff it? What you need is this. What is this? A TV card, digital TV card. So it's either an ATSC card or a DVB-C card. Uh, the DVB-C card you'll find out in Europe uh, it has more advantages. For example, it can use multi, uh, different symbol rates. Well, that's Arab stuff you don't really care about. But anyway, um, in the US, you use ATSC, and in Europe, DVB-C, you can sniff everybody. This is uh, possible just because um, they did engineer that to use the very same frequencies. So that's it. Yeah, uh, talking about the price of this card, it's $100 so everybody can afford it. Um, there is one downside is that you, as I said, you only have the downstream because the upstream is a different frequency, it's below 50 megahertz, and those cards can't handle it. So, uh, but the downstream is way enough, you'll see, we can do a lot of stuff already. I like to, to try different hardware to, for example, the USRP, not sure if you guys know. Uh, USRP stands for Universal uh, software radio peripheral, and it's actually um, coupled with GNU radio, and you can use whatever tuner and whatever, um, so tuner and antennas to get, send and receive. You could even code a cable modem yourself with that device. That would be really nice. 
Um, on the software part, there is uh, Packetomatic. So it works this way. You got the input module, so it's fully modular. You got the input module, you can select, okay, I want to sniff from Doxis, I want to sniff from PCAP, so interface, files, whatever. Then uh, all your packets are processed using the rules that you specified. So you can say, okay, I want Ethernet, uh, then IPv4, then everything that is TCP on port whatever, or um, even if you use the Doxis uh, input and say, okay, my layer is gonna be uh, first layer is going to be Doxis. You can say, okay, I want all the Doxis packets. With, well, I'll show you there. <laughs> it's very this way. Um, once it's processed, at the same time, there's the, the helpers. For example, if you got a fragmented IPv4 packet, it's just going to reassemble it and send the, the complete IPv4 packet to the um, upper layer. This way, the, the software layer doesn't have to care about all these specificities of the, the protocols. I uh, forgot to, to say that each protocol is also um, just a module. So for example, if let's say IPv8 is gonna come later on, I <laughs> hope not, um, you can just code a module and that's it. You got IPv8 support. So once you match your packets, you know what you want, it's processed by the target and the target does whatever you like. So for example, right now there are targets to dump HTTP uh, traffic, so it's gonna dump the images, it's gonna dump the web file, um, the, the HTML file, it's gonna dump uh, the video file, so start, let's say you start the, docs, the that software packetomatic on, um, on a docs stream, you say, hmm, okay, everything that is on port 80, dump the video, and you'll see every, that what people are gonna say, uh, what gonna, sorry, you'll see everything that people go and see on YouTube, and you can just click and see. That's cool. Um, also, everything occurs real time. Um, yeah, I didn't want something like, you know, Ethereum, Wireshark, you dump all your stuff, you got a PCAP, you read the file, and then if you, let's say, want to extract, if you want to extract um, some audio files, you have to right click and then um, extract, and it's boring. So what you do is simply, um, Set this up, say, okay, all these ports, you know, it's RTP traffic, it's voice traffic. Simply process them as audio and it will just reassemble all the files real time. So you will see everything growing in your directory. It's really scary too because there are five at the same time usually. You can't just listen to all of them. Yep, so also there's a Telnet and XML RPC interface. Um, the XML RPC interface uh, it's actually a web interface, I'll show you there. You can use both at the same time, it's very cool. Okay, so what you can do. First, privacy. Of course, you can sniff all the data, that's, that's easy, but then you need to process them. Sniffing all the data, um, well, you got, let's say, five megs per second of, of traffic, this is huge. So you need to really sort out and say, okay, I want this part of the traffic, so you probably will need to use um, Wireshark to first analyze the traffic that you get and see, oh, okay, these IP address are used for uh, voice, these IP address I use for um, other stuff. Then you, uh, you build your rules, build your targets, and that's it, it will do whatever you like. Um, yeah, there are additional targets. For example, the mails. Uh, I tried once on a test network. Uh, so, for example, let, let's take this scenario. You have one ISP who has a pub3 server, so it gives accounts to all its customers. And of course, the pub3 server is not encrypted, which is never encrypted anyway. Um, and everybody is going to connect to the pub3 servers and. Well, it's very easy simply to say, okay, uh, sort all the mails that you retrieve, put them in uh, IP, uh, so sort them by uh, directories for each directory. It's gonna be the IP address of the, the guy and its email for its, all its emails in a mail dear format. And it's a simply start uh, a NIMAP server and you get everybody's email in your mail client. You can also uh, do uh, denial of service. So if you're bored, if it's like uh, 4 p.m., 8 p.m., and you don't have a lot of bandwidth available for you. <laughs> so, uh, 
Well, you simply sniff, see, you know, run NTOP or whatever, see who's taking all your bandwidth. And it's actually possible to, re to re-inject, re um, so it works this way. You've got one, uh, your PC with the, the, digit, the, the TV card, you sniff packets, and you re-inject the TCP reset packets through your modem, and that's gonna go through, because the modem itself is just a stupid Ethernet bridge. Uh, I mean, well, of course, provided you remove the, the, the right ACLs on the modem. Anyway, so it just works. Uh, <laughs> it's amazing. <laughs> All right, um, SNMPX. So as I said, you, once you get access to, uh, to the modem via SNMP, you can do a lot of stuff. Uh, first of all, the in most interesting stuff is to change the IP filter. Um, so you can't send email, you can't receive email on port 25, blah, no problem. SNMP set, well, there you go, it's removed. It goes as well for um, the file rolling rules that are usually set to access the other modems in the network. So each modem gets, um, you know, an IP address in a private range like 10 dot something, and you cannot access those range for obvious reasons. But well, once you remove the, the filter, you can access it. Huh? And well, you can do the very same thing, meaning connect via the web interface, an MP, change, reboot uh, people's modem, have fun. So, I mean, I, I haven't been through the whole SNMP uh, documentation for, for the modems, but they're just too much. Also, um, yeah, miscellaneous stuff. Um, so, yeah, sniffing the, the Doxis stream is nice, but then you probably want to use the, the, the tools that you have already. I don't know, tools like, um, well, if you simply want to TCP dump or Wireshark or DSniff, uh, well, you know. Uh, you simply create a tab device and it's gonna help output every package that you got to that device. So it will create a virtual interface in your Linux system and you can use it as a normal interface to sniff from it. Okay, so references, uh, if you wanna dig deeper into this protocol, you can find a full protocol specification on cablelabs.com. Um, it's all open, uh, they just hide a bit of stuff regarding the encryption, but still, you can find it. Um, MPEG, yeah, the, as I said, the encapsulation works this way, so um, you got MPEG packets, which are 188 bytes, and then in each of these packets uh, are encapsulated DOCSIS frames, and in those DOCSIS frames, you got Ethernet frames, and then the known uh, suite of protocol, so IP4, TCP, whatever. And for the software, just go on packomatic.com and download it. All right, let's do the demo now. Oh, it's already running, okay. All right, so to start the software, just do minus E so it starts with an empty configuration. Um, is, it, is it readable or? Okay, what about this? Okay. Oh, damn. Sorry, I don't think I can do anything about that. I tested it though, but uh, anyway, um, that should be way enough. Okay, cool. So let me show you Telnet interface. Simply Telnet to it, port 4655. Choose that uh, like, uh, you know, like Debian and random dice and that's it. Um, first thing to do, set up the input module that you wanna use. To do this, very easy, set input type doxis. Okay, uh, and we got our input configured. So you can see current input doxis, it's a normal mode, um, it's Eurodoxis. I'm coming from Europe, uh, so I just said that to through. You just kind of have to change that yourself. Um, for you can see, well, that's the default one. Uh, but it's not what I want to do. I don't know right now what is on this network. So, well, let's scan. So there's another mode for this input set, input mode. Uh, let's see what we have. Oh, scan. Good. Okay, so no it's in mode scan. Start frequency zero, well, I know where it is, so I'll put it to something closer. Set, input, parameter, come on. Uh, 
Is that it? Uh, three, nope. That should do. Yeah, maybe I should change that to megahertz. Anyway, so this is it. Um, well, the only thing left is to start the input. So that's it, the start to scan. It goes from the frequency I specified to the maximum one. It's gonna look into every single megahertz, see what's going there. Okay, oh, it got a frequency. It, it, it was able to tune, but um, obviously it was not a DOCSIS stream because it didn't receive any sync message. So it goes to skip it. It's probably a TV cable, uh, sorry, TV, um, uh, you know, Okay, there we go. So it found it. This is it, frequency tune, downstream acquired. You got the frequency, 442 megahertz, symbol rates, well, you don't care about that, QIM. Yeah, you may, uh, there are two of them that are available, QM 256 and 64. So if you don't find anything on QM, 256, just try 64. You'll certify something. Okay, so this is nice. We got our input. Is it dumping packets? Oh, yeah, it is. Quite a lot, actually. <laughs> okay, so let's do something with that. Um, just for, sorry, let's close this. I don't need it. Uh, for privacy reason, I'll just not show anything. Uh, Come on, guys. I can't do that. You know I can't. Hold on, I'm not done yet. <laughs> All right, so, uh, well, let's just see how much bandwidth you got. So this is in Belgium. Um, it's uh, like, it's about 4 a.m. there, so I don't expect to have a lot of traffic. Let's see. So first of all, let's add a rule. Rule, mm, I want old Ethernet traffic. Okay, so that's it. Got my rule. Show rules. It's disabled. Let's just enable it. Enable rule zero. Okay, so it starts to process packets already. I see it's matching stuff. So after the rules, uh, we need the target. Um, okay, let's try to do that virtual inf interface stuff. Add target. Oop target to uh, rule zero, and this is all the target available. So you just do tab, you get the completion, and you see what's what you can do. So I'll use target tab, show targets, there we go. It stopped, and face name, palm zero, that's fine. Let's start it. Oop, start, target, zero, zero, there we go. Okay, let's see. Uh, if config, palm zero, hmm, cool, it's working. Let's take it up. Okay, a bit of traffic, not much, but there is something. So that's it. I, I will not show any <laughs> packets. <laughs> but I'll do some more demo on my laptop, you'll see. So yeah, um, this is one of the possibilities. Let's say no, I want to dump the whole Doxy stream in a pickup file. So as you all know, Wireshark, it dumps ethernet traffic, so at the ethernet layer. But it can also, you can put different stuff in those pickup files. You can put Doxys packets, so you can go up one layer. Um, so you got Doxys, ethernet, uh, IPv4, and etc. Or you can even go down one layer, meaning you can just save the row IP in, um, in PCAP, and it's all manageable here. So let me start again uh, with the new uh, configuration. It'll be easier. So I stop it. You can see there are a few stats. It tells me it get damage MPEG packets on, so it's not uh, IP packets. And apparently my link was quite good because I didn't miss anything. Okay, but probably because there is not much bandwidth. I mean, not much traffic. All right, so let's start again. I know about the input, so let's uh, set input type doxis. Let's do this quickly. Input parameter frequency. Oh, come on, frequency 442.123.123. Start input. There we go, too easy. 
All right, so um, at row, I'm, oh yeah, I forgot something. So here you can see alt layer is ethernet. So by default, that input is gonna give you ethernet packets because you, you probably don't care about the, that, that DOCSIS layer, but you can change it here by setting that parameter to DOCSIS, set input parameter alt layer DOCSIS. Start input. There we go. Um, yeah, I forgot to mention something. All the rules that you specify, you have to specify all the full layers that you want to use. So in this case, if I want to dump, let's say, TCP traffic, I have to specify um, DOCSIS because the very first layer that I'll have from the input is going to be DOCSIS, then Ethernet, then IPv4. I do the differentiate IPv4 and IPv6 just this way, and TCP. Show rules, okay, it's disabled, enable rule zero. There we go, there's a bit of traffic. And uh, at target zero PCAP, let's save all of these, will be useful. Target is stopped. Let's, um, so here again, this is what I was talking about. You can set whatever uh, layer you want to save. So if you want to save uh, DOCSIS packets, so it can be useful for DOCSIS engineers who want to troubleshoot what was going on. Well, okay, without the upstream, you do. Yep, set target parameter, zero, zero, layer, DOCSIS. There we go. Uh, where did I dump it? Oh, dump the PCAP, okay. Where is it? Uh, there you go. So you can see it's got everything and it's DOCSIS. It's not the Ethernet layer. That's very useful. Okay, so um, let me show you some more stuff. No, but not on this uh, DOCSIS. Uh, network simply because it's too far away and it's was such a burden to try to get something out of it. So I'll just use uh, Packetomatic on my laptop and show you uh, some extra stuff you can do. But consider this as if it was just um, on on the DOCSIS network. All right, so let's try to um, dump some images that I will uh, go on um, go and see on the internet. So I just started. Minus E, empty config, minus X, I enable the web interface. Whoops, I forgot that it's already running here. Okay. So I started here. Let me show you the web interface. Um, is this readable? It, oh, that's big too much. Okay. Okay, good. So um, as usual, configure the input. I'll just use PCAP here. Uh, whoop. I need to select the mode. I'll say interface this way. I'm not, I mean, you can either uh, sniff from an interface or sniff from a file that you recorded already. ETH zero, snap and it's all fine. Save changes and start input. Come on, okay. Operation, of, of course, key, come on. It works better as root. All right, let's try again. Gear input. Okay, it's started now. So you see it's um, same stuff you see in the console. All right, so let's see images. Hmm, that must be on port 80. Come on. Uh, I've got difficulties to click. IPv4, TCP.S port equal equal 80. Yeah, um, about this uh, source board, you just select one side of the direct, um, one side of the communication because there are contract, contract, so connection tracking modules. They will just find out what 
what is coming out of, from the reverse direction. So if you want to sniff um, anything that is on port 80, select source or destination, it does not really matter because um, once the target will uh, start to dump the very first connection, it will say, hey, no, you saved the contract information and I want to know about every single packet from the reverse direction. So it's all taken, all taken care of. Okay, I got my nice rule. Let's add a target. Up, uh, which CTP default mode uh, dump images? Yes. Slash TMP, they'll do. Okay. Um, so input is started. Let's start the rule. I mean, sorry, enable the rule. Start the target. Let's see if we can get the same. Just to confirm, um, nope, nope, come on. So input is configured file, rules are okay, targets are cool, all right. Well, let's go on a stupid website. Do you, do you guys like lolcats? Whoops. Okay, so it's nice. <laughs> Nobody cares about it. All right, oh, there are a few images. Okay, it works. <laughs> so as I said, it's that easy. You, know, you, select, you select your inputs. Okay, Doxis, say I want everything on that poor 80 and um, dumb image, video, PDF, binary files, HTML files, whatever. You're just gonna get it. You can look at it and have fun. All right, so that's one thing. No, let's do something a bit more nasty because, okay. Let's get rid of this. Goodbye. No, HTTP is fine, but TCP kill is funnier. <laughs> so simply, again, select the mode interface. Uh, there are two modes. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention that, yeah, I like this TCP kill a lot, so I kind of perfect it in a way that it works for IPv4, IPv6, and IPv4 in IPv6. So, uh, no, sorry, the opposite. Uh, IPv6 in IPv4. So if you... If you find somebody who's got a tunnel, you can still have fun with him. <laughs> All right, there we go. So let's start it. I'm not going to use the web browser this time simply because it caches everything, so I'll connect myself. Okay, it connects, but oh, oh, that's not good. Let's try again. Nope. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh, well, that's about it. Uh, I could show you a lot more stuff because there are a lot more stuff to, to do and to try. But uh, it's best you just go through it yourself. Uh, as a conclusion, uh, yeah, connect to your modem. Make sure it's encrypted. Uh, if possible, ask your ISP to switch to Doxis 3. <laughs> <laughs> because Doxis 2, I mean, the DES encryption is most probably not going to last long. And... Um, yeah, well, thanks for attending. I hope you had fun.